Good morning. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Bellingham. Whether you are joining us online in our bigger balcony or in person here uh, or watching this service later, we are so glad to have you with us. My name is Davi. I'm one of the pastors here. And I have just a few announcements as we begin worship together. Uh, firstly, uh, next Sunday is our annual All Questions Considered service. Uh, we like to at least once a year take questions from uh, members of the congregation, from other friends of the church, uh, and consider them as part of our worship service. So if you'd like to uh, submit a question for Pastor Sharon and I, or Pastor Sharon or I, to, to answer as part of our service, um, please do so. Um, you can uh, give them to one of our ushers this morning, or you can email them to office at fccb.net um, by the end of the day today, and we'll be glad to have those questions to help shape worship next Sunday. I do want to bring a word of gratitude and thank you on behalf of the Mission and Justice Board. We had a wonderful turnout for the Food Desert Fighters Pantry Drive yesterday. Um, we helped stock up the virtual Food Desert Fighters with um, food and uh, hygiene supplies and all manner of, of helpful things. And um, we heard back from them that all of those supplies were gone by 1 o'clock. So the wonderful work of the Food Desert Fighters continue. Um, I hope we will learn more about their efforts and continue get it, consider getting involved um, and consider being part of that work in other ways. Finally, I want to name, um, we are so glad to gather in person with those of you who are able to come. Um, and we want to let you know that we might be putting that on pause. Um, with the terrible surge in the coronavirus across our country and in Whatcom County, and especially with the Delta variant, um, we want to be very careful that we're worshiping in a way that is safe and appropriate and is not um, further contributing to this terrible crisis. So um, please keep an eye on your midweek message on Wednesday, the Friday email, and of course the church website um, to keep you posted about what our worship life will be like together. If we do have to go back to worshiping in separate homes for a while or in, in separate locations for a while, we know that you will be joining us with your prayers, with the warmth of your love, and we know that we will see each other again hopefully soon. The last message is the most important, and it's this one. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what you bring in your heart or mind or body, you are welcome in this place. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. rise in body for spirit and join in the responsive call to worship. What is worship without music? What is praise without song? Never doubt that we have a song in our hearts. The music of the spirits stimulates our senses. Our heartbeats love dove within us, keeping rhythm with the divine. The Spirit animates our limbs, provoking us to sway and tap and honor. What is worship without music? What is praise without song? We open ourselves to the many ways God tunes us as instruments. You can be seated. There's no asterisks anymore. This is a reading from our culture. This is from A Song to Sing, A Life to Live by Don Sailors and Emily Sailors. And if you know Sharon Benton, you know she picked this out. What is secular and what is sacred? I have felt the intensity of sacred music not only in the hallowed halls of church, but also in the smoky bars of Atlanta. 
One place smells of incense and candles. The other of cigarette smoke and beer. I can't say one experience is more deeply spiritual than another. Saturday night morphs into Sunday morning as I sit down with my father and we talk about how those two days and two ways are not really so separate. We speak of how music can deepen human life beyond measure and bring us closer to the truth of what it means to be human and to the transcendent power of love beyond our understanding. Music, we keep saying, is some kind of mysterious mediator between us and the God we speak. Seek. May the Spirit speak in many ways for us to hear.
myself. Uh, and we want to invite you to take a little video of just you or you and your family or you and your five favorite chickens um, and share that as part of the passing of the piece. Um, so you can um, give a little introduction to who you are and where you're at and then say peace be with you. So um, my name is Davi, as many of you know. I have on this beautiful prayer shawl that one of my college friends knitted for me after we graduated. And it's a lovely thing to put on when I'm a little cold or when I want some of that cozying into a time of prayer or worship. I have this, I have a lot of stuff on the wall of my office. Um, this is a little sketch um, by one of my favorite artists, Alison Bechtel, um, that has a like, I don't know, creative and playful and invitational spirit for me. Um, and then I have my, my mug of tea. This one's peppermint, but this is um, one of our young people made this for me. And so um, that's a great treasure as well. Um, all of us have different ways of settling into worship. All of us have different ways of feeling welcome, of feeling open to the spirit. But in my tradition and in our shared tradition, one of the ways we invite one another into that time of mystery and sacredness is to say, peace be with you. And you can say back and also with you. Thank you. Peace. I just realized I forgot to introduce myself earlier. My name is Lucy, and I'm the Minister of Music here at FCCB. <laughs> um, so this next path for experiencing worship, sorry, this path for experiencing worship tends to be a bit harder for some of us than others. It's rhythm. One of the things I've heard consistently in churches and in choirs is that when we clap along to music, we should clap on one, two, three, four. And that if we clap on one, two, three, four, or in some other way, we are doing it wrong or we don't have rhythm. But as your minister of music, I'm here to tell you that there is no wrong rhythm when you are worshiping God. It's how you feel the music. And so we have John, who is going to play on his box drum, and we are going to drum along with him. You can drum on the pew or the chair in front of you if there is one. Uh, you can tap your leg or play on a table or clap your hands, snap your fingers, stomp your feet, or you can tap a heartbeat rhythm on your chest like we did a couple of weeks ago. So as John plays, let's join him. Maybe your eyes will be closed and you'll listen for your own beat that draws you into the Holy's presence more fully or that connects you with those around you or that deepens your own centeredness. Whenever you're ready, John.
I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. God, you who stir in our hearts like that one song, that song that we can't get out of our heads or our hearts or our bodies, that song that keeps showing up in mysterious or troubling or nonetheless hopeful ways. God, give us once again your sweet rhythm, your invitation to that dance, your opening notes to that harmony. God, hear our prayers, and may they be once again part of our own notes, our own heartbeats, our own collaboration with you, O oh, divine composer, sweet improviser on our hearts. God, we pray for those who are sick or dying in this season. We pray especially for those who suffer from COVID and for all who give them care, doctors and nurses, hospital workers, those who labor in clinics, those who deliver the vaccine, this great exhausted multitude of healers. Bless them, O oh God, and bless all of us as we hold this time of change and fear. Give us wisdom and courage, creativity and grace as we help one another to survive. God, we pray for all of those who are impacted by catastrophic weather, fires in the west, storms in the east, flash floods in the south. Here and abroad, God, bring healing, bring change. God, we continue to pray for the people of Afghanistan, those who are in the country, and those who are scattered as refugees or other travelers. We pray that you will make places of hospitality and peace in the face of such violence and terror. And we pray that you will help us to wrestle with our country's participation in that violence and terror. God, be with those who hold grief in this season, the sharp grief of a recent death in the family or a loved one, and the longer, twisting, winding grief of holding the memory of those who have gone before with pain, with celebration, with relief, with confusion. Guide us all in this season and hear now also the notes that each of us offer up. Melodies out loud, names spoken quietly, or that deeper rumbling those we hold deep in our hearts and guts. Hear our prayers, O oh God.
God, you who call us each one onto the dance floor, whether we like it or not. Thank you for the gift of hearing our prayers. Thank you for the gift of your many songs, which are the same song that goes like this. Our parent who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading today is from 2 Chronicles 5, 11 to 14. Then the priests left the holy place. All the priests who were present had sanctified themselves, regardless of their divisions. All the Levitical musicians, Asaph, Heman, Juduthan, and their families and relatives were dressed in fine linen and stood east of the altar with cymbals, harps, and zithers along with 120 priests blowing trumpets. The trumpeters and singers joined together to praise and thank the Lord as one. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other musical instruments, they began to sing, praising the Lord. Yes, God is good. Yes, God's faithful love lasts forever. Then a cloud filled the Lord's temple. The priests were unable to carry out their duties on account of the cloud because the Lord's glory filled God's temple. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Susan Huffman. My husband, Ted, and I are the interim ministers of Faith Formation, and we're happy to be here worshiping with you and to lead this time of sharing uh, with children of all ages. Since we are practicing um, safe distancing, we're asking children, there's whatever children are here, to be comfortable right where you are, We also hope that all children and others maybe can find some kind of musical instrument to use at home um, for during this time with children. Maybe you have a drum or a shaker or a piano in your home. Some of you who are here worshiping in the sanctuary uh, received an instrument when you entered the sanctuary today. If you don't have an instrument, no worries. You might find a pot and a wooden spoon or something else that can be used to make music. Two pot lids make a great pair of cymbals. Let me show you. (laughs) No, don't, don't, don't. That will be too loud, no. Didn't you listen to the scripture this morning? In it, there were lots of instruments making lots of noise. I think it was louder than this. I don't think you're supposed to make that much noise in worship. (laughs) See, that wasn't too loud. The roof didn't collapse. It was pretty loud, though. But if you don't have an instrument, you can make music by clapping your hands or snapping your fingers or drumming on a book or a table with your hands. Did you say drums? 
Oh, why are you being so loud? I said you can just make music with your body, like gentle music. Like this? Well, I guess that would do. I've got an idea. I, is it another loud idea? Didn't you just hear what Jen just read? In the scripture, it says there were 120 priests with trumpets. Uh, yeah, I heard that. 120 priests with trumpets. That would be really, really loud. Thank goodness we don't have 120 priests here. No, but I do have a trumpet. Let me get it. That's really loud, too. How about you just leave it where it is? It's pretty, but let, yeah, no. Isn't it a beauty? And, and a trumpet isn't just about how it looks. A trumpet is about how it sounds. We know how trumpets sound. We can imagine it. You don't really have to show us. But I brought it from home just to show how it sounds. Now, if you want to imagine something, imagine 120 trumpets. That's too loud. Uh, I guess when Solomon had the Ark of the Covenant brought up to the temple, he wanted people to sit up and pay attention. But 120 priests with trumpets is really more than I could take. Maybe God enjoys extravagance, even when it comes to our music. And maybe God does listen to all the music we make. Make a joyful noise to God, all the people. If you have an instrument or can make a sound with your hands or your voice, let's make a joyful noise. <laughs> Did I tell you I have a didgeridoo? <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> oh. I give thanks for scripture texts like this one. They may be really unfamiliar to many of us, but they can come alive in amazing new ways. I am well acquainted with the saying, nobody leaves worship humming the sermon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless we sang our sermons, which Dobby sometimes does, so, you know, maybe we get to hum the sermons sometimes. But what is so true about that is that music goes deep. Uh, it, it teaches us theology, often without us even realizing it. I give thanks that Jesus Loves Me it was one of the songs that I learned as such a small child, because that message, Jesus Loves Me, it is now a part of me. And I pray it's a part of you, too, if that's one that you got to sing growing up. Music can lead us through highs and lows. Just listening to Judy play piano earlier can take you places. It helps us feel and then release emotions. In today's scripture, we witness the dedication of the first Jewish temple built in Jerusalem in 957 BCE. And King Solomon is finishing what his father David never got to see built. And the time for the celebration for religious ceremony and all of that pomp and circumstance has come. At the height of the dedication, the Ark of the Covenant 
in which the Israelites had transported the stone tablets that God's commandments had been written on. They had carried that Ark of the Covenant through the wilderness for generations. And finally, it has been brought into its holy residence. This is huge. For generations, the people carried it with them, wandering. And this is the symbol of God's covenant with them. Now it finally has this permanent place, so they celebrated. Chronicles says, all the priestly musicians and their families played cymbals, harps, and zithers, along with those 120 trumpeters. Amid this cacophony of sound, voices joined in praise, singing, yes, God is good. Yes, God's faithful love lasts forever. If you look up Psalm 118 and Psalm 136, you will see those exact words. So maybe the people were singing the Psalms. Praising God was a response to those many experiences that had brought them to this moment in time. At the temple dedication, they remembered slavery in Egypt and wilderness wandering. Praise was their response to finding a new home and building community in that place. In times like this, how can we keep from singing? as a favorite hymn proclaims. In a time like this, unless of course we have a novel coronavirus with a Delta variant spreading rampantly among us, that can keep us from singing, and faithfully so. But even then, even then, there are cymbals and harps and zithers and whatever else y'all have in your pews and at home this morning. We have tapping heartbeat hands and shuffling feet. We cannot stop the music. It is there whether or not we are able to sing along. I read in a Christian Century article this week, the quote, the church is the field hospital where those who, having been wounded by their participation in Christ's mission, are bandaged up so they can be sent right back out into the front lines of the battle. The church is the field hospital where those who, having been wounded by their participation in Christ's mission, are bandaged up so they can be sent right back out into the front lines of the battle. Now, while war imagery goes completely against my theology as a peace with justice person, the sense that part of the church's function is to prepare us to keep following Christ in the world resonates deeply. To keep following Christ, to come in and bandage our wounds when we are in the midst of challenging times so that we can go out and keep living Christ's mission in this time through the challenges that each of us face. This imagery resonates so deeply. And music, it does that for so many of us. It binds our wounds. It heals our spirits. It encourages and helps us get back out there doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly amongst God's beloved creation. Which leads me to the end part of today's passage from Chronicles. In the midst of the music, with the swelling of praise, something happens. Some mystical experience that the chroniclers of this period wanted to preserve. The text reads, then a cloud filled the divine's temple. The priests were unable to carry out their duties on account of the cloud. 
because the divine glory filled God's temple. They had an experience of the holy. So much so that the rest of the ritual stood still. Whatever the priests had planned next had paused because who could do more than stop and be in awe? Have you ever had a moment like that? Perhaps it was sparked by music, maybe not. I think of someone I knew who, when the organ played, he would be so wrapped in wonder that he wouldn't even try to hold back the tears. He would just sit. And if you were next to him, you couldn't speak to him because he was just, oh, in that organ music. Or a time when we had a soloist sing a traditional praise song, which is atypical in our context, but I watched a member sing along to this praise song, swaying, and her eyes were lit brighter than I had seen them. As that Emily Sellers quote that Jen read earlier names, music, Music is some kind of mediator, this mysterious mediator between us and the God that we seek. Not all the same music by any means. I know that some of you may be skeptical that the organ could evoke such emotion from someone that he was just so still and couldn't be moved. Or we might scoff at what we view as the simplicity of praise music. Music wars in churches are not new, not by any means. But I once heard somebody ask, why would you want to keep your sibling from experiencing God if that is what happens for them with that style of music? If they need to move in the pew, if they need to tap the hymnal in front of them, if they need to stand and shout, if they need to sit silently and simply listen, if that is your neighbor's way of experiencing God, amen. If that's your way, do it. Who's to say that something that we don't typically do, like the ways that Lucy is teaching us in experimenting with music today, who's to say that it won't in some expect, unexpected moment lead you to a holy encounter, even if it's not your typical way? So I know someday, I know that someday our voices will join together in song again. We will sing. Maybe we'll even sing with those who sang the Psalms at the temple dedication. God is good. Yes, God's faithful love lasts forever. But for now, we will clap it. We will tap it. Maybe we'll even sway a little bit. I know, don't go wild. But we will listen. And we will give thanks to God. May it be so. Amen.
So now we're going to increase the discomfort zone for some of you, or for many of us who grew up in white Protestant traditions. Our churches didn't have a lot of music or dance. And some of us may have learned that letting loose like that in worship was inappropriate or shameful. But God gave us bodies. We are created good. However, our bodies are shaped or seemingly different from the typical. Elaine and Dawn are going to play for just a little while, and I invite you now to rise in body or spirit. And we're going to try a few things together. So, if you are able, raise your hands in the air. How does that feel? Feels a bit weird to me. <laughs> I feel a little vulnerable. Um, let's keep going. So let's um, try to sway a little bit. Maybe add some raise the roof. Maybe uh, if your balance is okay today, you can start doing a bit of a shuffle. Or if you have some room where you're standing, you can turn around. Maybe you know how to do the samba. <laughs> Anything goes. So let's get ready to move. Okay. So again, there is no wrong way to do this. It can be big movements. It can be little movements. You might close your eyes so you can seek that connection with the holy through the music as it moves through your body. And just ignore everyone else, everything else and everyone else. And move how the spirit moves you. So when Elaine and Don are ready, here we go. You don't have to dance for this part, I promise. <laughs> you can if you want to. Okay, so um, I've done this a few times recently, so it's always like coming up with new stories to tell. So they tell you to tell a personal story, so here I am again. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a couple years ago, I was having a hard time, going through a lot in life. And one Sunday, I, um, my soul wanted to be at church, but my body didn't really want to go to church, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> it turns out I was just ahead of my time. I wanted to live stream on the bigger balcony from my couch in my pajamas. But we didn't have that yet, uh, so I've been loving all these advancements. Um, we didn't have that yet, so I did what any reasonable person would do, um, which is come late, 
Um, so I, I came late. And I sat in the back, um, but I don't even mean the back because like my energy tank for interacting with people was like non-existent. So coming in past an usher to take a paper was just too much. So I literally sat like out in the narthex, right, right out there. I'm waving to the person who's doing it today. Hi, <laughs> in, the, in the rockers, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm just here. You know, I came late. I tell you <laughs> the number of people who like came to check in or like viewed me from across the room and were like, what's up, what you, what, what's going on, what are you doing? What's, what's going on over there? And I was just like, no, no, I'm good, I'm not interacting, you know? The number of people was ridiculous considering that I came late, left early and did not sit in the room. <laughs> but the number of people who in the preceding next week or two reached out to Sharon or Sherry or my mom to be like, is she okay? check in with her was also pretty entertaining. I'm fine. It's fine. Everybody, I'm fine. Um, but that is why I give to this church. I'm not a big R religion person. I don't believe everything, but I do believe in this church, and I believe that it's a family and that it's a community, not only for us as individuals, but within our community and the things that we do. And so that's why I give, that's why I pledge, that's why I put it on auto pay so I don't forget, because I would. Um, and that's why when unique things come up, like the ground floor, or building maintenance, or food drives, um, I always take that second to reflect on my own personal budget and figure out what can I do. Um, and sometimes it's monetary and sometimes it's not. Um, but I encourage everyone, you know, if you're if you've been in this community for a long time, remember all those little times the church has been there for you. If you haven't, if you're new, awesome. Um, we're here. Um, so find your ways to engage. Um, and one of those is through offering. So there are five ways to give. If you need any info of that, it's all around. But I encourage you to give. Okay, so um, this last section we've uh, titled Choose Your Own Adventure because now we're going to integrate what we've tried into one of our more typical mu worship music experiences, a hymn. So I'm going to sing number 561, When in Our Music God is Glorified. And since those of you in here, those of you here in person can't sing along with me, you get to choose any of the other ways to experience music we've tried today. You can stand and dance or sit and listen. You can tap your knee or your heart or your pew. And I'd like to introduce one more option too. So one of the most profound ways of non-vocal expression is through sign language. So we hope to delve deeper into this in the future, but for now I'd like to teach you the sign for Alleluia since every verse of this hymn ends with an alleluia. So there are three parts to the sign. The first is to clap your hands as in praise. So with the music, it works best if we clap our hands three times. So let's try that out one more time. One, two, three. Next, you're going to make a light fist with your first finger crooked. And you're gonna circle your hands in an upward motion, which indicates celebration. And then the last is to open your hands to the sky, lifting them up to God. So all three together go, Alleluia. Lovely. Let's try that one more time. Alleluia. So at the end of each verse, if you feel like doing that, you can do the sign language or you can dance or you can clap or you can listen. So I'm just going to get my singer's mask on and then we're going to glorify God with our music in every and all ways.
when in a music God is glorified, and adoration leaves no room for pride. It is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. How often making music we have found a new dimension in the world of sound as worship moves us to a more profound Alleluia. So has the church in liturgy and song, in faith and voice who have a voice to raise, oops, born witness to the truth in every tongue. Alleluia. Let every instrument he tune be praised. Let all 